So for me, my two favorite genres are horror and science fiction. And whenever I hear about like a new original take on something within those genres, I'm automatically intrigued. So when I heard about the creator, saw that first poster, saw that first teaser trailer, and found out who was involved in making this film, automatically super excited, give me the film right now. So as a fan of science fiction, does the creator deliver the goods? Is it worth checking out in theaters? Well, let's talk about it. What is going on movie fans and welcome back to my channel. Elliot here today to share with you all my thoughts about the new Gareth Edwards science fiction film by the name of Creator, which I got the opportunity to check out in IMAX. And in today's video, I'm gonna let you know, number one, should you see it in IMAX? But more importantly, should you see the film at all? Is it worth checking out? We'll be discussing that and much more in today's review. But first, let's start the conversation in the comment section. Let me know if you were excited for this film, if you are a fan of the science fiction genre. And of course, once you've seen the Creator, Let's talk the good, the bad, the ugly. What really worked for you? Was it the direction, the story, the world building, the performances? What didn't work? What were some things that just did not land for you? And if you are a fan of the genre, why don't you list for me your top three science fiction films in the comments below and let's have some fun. So let's talk about the director here, Gareth Edwards. Now he made a film, what is almost 13 years now, called Monster. It was an independent film. And when I saw that, I said to myself, he's a director I want to keep my eye out for and fast forward to 2014 he makes Godzilla which I know some people come at me in the comments I enjoy Godzilla I like the slow burn I like his approach to the iconic character fast forward to 2016 one of my favorite Star Wars films is Rogue One and that moment there I'm like oh he's about to take off he's the next big you know superstar director Time went by. It has been seven years since we got a Gareth Edwards film, and I'm thinking to myself, what has this man been doing? Well, I'm here to tell you, he was in the kitchen cooking. Let's talk about his direction with the creator. He puts together the kind of unique and bold, large and scale original science fiction that honestly, we just don't get in Hollywood nowadays. There's a level of confidence that radiates from his direction in this film, and he's taken a lot of risk in this movie, and I'll be honest, some of them don't completely stick the landing, but it's the fact that he's willing to do something new to do something different to take that risk that I personally applaud now something I think a lot of people including myself will say about this film when you see it is well it has a lot of this going on that reminds me of this film it has this plot that reminds me of this film and while yes the film definitely has moments where you can see Apocalypse Now Star Wars Blade Runner Akira District 9 Avatar just to name a few and yes thematically it shares some similar beats and themes but I don't consider this like a copy and paste or like trying to be those films but instead I think Gareth Edwards is paying homage and appreciation to those films and other films that you might be able to see in this movie while having his own vision and style so like I mentioned going back to 2010's monster to where we at now with the creator I think the creator is his best work to date fantastic direction by Gareth Edwards now pivoting over and talking about yes as I mentioned I love science fiction I was so completely completely immersed in this beautifully crafted world where it's a world in the future where there's a war between the human race and the forces of artificial intelligence and I'm telling you right now I could have spent three more hours four more hours in the politics of the world and just seeing all the different technology used during this time I mean there are just so many detailed moments the way the design of the robots there's so many cool little moments in the background you're hearing about like duplicate yourself and there's one this cool idea I don't want to get too much into the spoilers of it all but there's an idea where if you die you can plug yourself in and almost kind of reanimate your last thought. I mean, there's just so many cool little things in this film that as a fan of science fiction, I couldn't get enough of it. I can't stress enough how fascinating the world building is and the use of the science fiction to me was just completely unbelievable. Now, when I found out that this film, and once you see the film, you'll be just as mind boggled and just mind blown as I was, this movie cost about 80 to 85 million dollars that's the production budget not including marketing and all that stuff but just how to make the movie 80 to 85 million dollars absolutely astounding because again when you all see the film and you see the world building the design the epic nature the war scenes 
I'm impressed. <laughs> I am impressed. Kudos to the production team. Kudos to Gareth Edwards knowing how to manage um, the money to bring in us this very epic science fiction film. Now, performance-wise, I thought everyone was pretty solid across the board. I think of Allison Jenny, who plays somewhat of the villain of this story. And what I liked about her, number one, she's a fantastic actress, as we all know. But her character, she believes what she's doing so much. There's just so much confidence in what she's doing that I really appreciate it. Also, you have Ken Watanabe, who is just a true treasure in my personal opinion he brings so much humanity to the character that he's playing because he is an artificial intelligent robot in this film really enjoyed him talking about my man now you know i ordered my hot sauce an hour ago john david washington i'm gonna be honest i thought that he was okay i thought he was solid in this film i found as though some of the the jokes that we get with him early on and some of the the character decisions from not just him but also the direction that he was getting in some parts didn't really stick the landing but the thing that works for me in in this performance one of the things i like about him as an actor he's able to pull on those emotional threads he's able to really kind of get into those emotionally charged scenes involving him and this mission that he's going on which is very personal for him but also the relationship he has with a particular character by the name of alfie who in this big large epic scale science fiction movie this character was my favorite performance that comes from what I was able to look up. This is the acting debut from the young lady by the name of Madeline. Yuna is the beating heartbeat of this film and this story. She delivers such a beautiful performance as the weapon of this film. I was so invested in that character's journey and she made me get emotional in the best way possible. Phenomenal job by her. This film really requires you to buy this relationship between our main character Joshua and Alfie and for me it started off a little rocky not all of the emotional connection between two characters really resonated with me but by the end of the film I was hooked and I bought into that relationship so I'm gonna warn you all now if you don't buy into that relationship you might not like the film but for me I ultimately really enjoy where we landed with those two main characters now lastly I got to talk about the goat Hans Zimmer's score which was absolutely fantastic if you don't know Interstellar is my favorite science fiction film of all time and there are hints and shades of that interstellar score within the creator so you should see it for just that alone but no i love that score it's a really killer soundtrack to this movie as well whenever you have a radio head needle drop you're going to get some brownie points for me i talked about the world building and everything of that nature and the production what they were able to accomplish with 80 to 85 million dollars the production value is so fantastic the cinematography is just so beautiful it is just so well put together from a production standpoint so everything from the camera the the sound, the sound mixing, the lighting, top notch. But touching a little bit on the story, which I found myself really engaged with, this film definitely has a lot of war elements and definitely reflects the actual wars. For example, there's some Vietnam moments within this film, and there's an undercurrent of hate and violence against the machines. And I know that it might rub some people the wrong way, especially in the landscape that we're in with artificial intelligence, whether it's the writers and actor strikes, there's other labor strikes going on involving artificial intelligence so i know it might not completely work for people but within the context in the framework of this film i really like the narrative around the ai and the how people perceive ai how they manipulate it how they take advantage of it i really liked how it was woven into this particular narrative and even with all that science fiction stuff going on there's exhilarating action there's incredible set pieces but at the end of the day this is a story about love hope and what it means to be alive and to live so there's a lot of heart that I really appreciate about this film. So I can go on and on and on about the things that really stood out to me. But those are the main ones. But this film isn't perfect. This isn't a masterpiece. It does have its flaws. Let's talk about some of those criticisms. No spoilers, but there are a lot of grand ideas within this film. And I feel like some of those ideas bogged down the pacing. Some of those ideas weren't fully fleshed out and didn't really work for me entirely. And that's it's frustrating because, again, there's so much goodness going on with this film that there are just moments where I'm like, ah, I wish we could explore that more or really dive deeper into that and really flesh those ideas out. Now, as I mentioned, I was bought into the emotional aspect in this film, especially when we get to the end of the movie. But I do wish, as I talked about earlier, that the relationship between our two main characters at the beginning, I wish it was just handled better. Again, it takes time, obviously, when you're building a relationship within a two hour and 10 minute framework but i 
just wish that it was a little bit more refined in the beginnings of Alfie and Joshua's relationship. And a couple more points I want to bring up, and these are more or less just kind of nitpicks. The comedy beats in the film, which is mostly predominantly in the first half, really felt a little bit off to me. There are some moments where the dialogue felt a bit clunky. There's some oddly weird editing choices in this film. In the third act, emotionally, it worked. It hit for me. But I feel like when we get to the climax and there's like the actual war going on between the humans and the AI, some of that stuff felt a little bit rushed for my personal taste. And it just feels like those moments there, feeling kind of rushed at the end, more of the connection with the characters at the beginning, and just some little nuanced things that I wish were more fully developed that keeps this film from just being next level, excellent science fiction film. But before I give you all my overall thoughts and give you my score and let you know if this is worth checking out, if you stuck around to this point in review, I want to take the time to thank you. If you haven't already, consider liking this video, sharing the video, leaving your thoughts in the comments, and consider subscribing to the channel. Overall, the creator is what we need more of in today's blockbusters. Gareth Edwards pays homage to the greats that have inspired and influenced the genre, but still adds his own unique flavor, paired perfectly with beautiful cinematography, an amazing score by Hans Zimmer, and I hope that we get to see more of these type of movies, but also more of some Gareth Edwards films, because I thought he did a great job. The creator for me is going to get a 4.5 out of 5. Now, normally, I wouldn't give a film that had a little bit of some wonky dialogue, a little bit of a rushed third act, and some things that weren't as fleshed out as I personally would have liked to have seen, especially with all the world building we'd had here. But the reason I'm giving this a higher score than what I would normally do with some of those negatives I had, be again, science fiction, love the genre. I love when science fiction touches on the pulse of what we're going on now in society. And this definitely has a longer lasting conversation within the future. So I don't think it's just time stamped in today's society. I think people will be discovering this movie 30 years from now. But it's also the immersiveness. I felt so connected to this world because again, when you see it, it is so tangible. It is so layered and just feels like it's actually in reality so that alone kind of helps me boost up the film I feel like the science fiction elements the strong moments of performance the great direction elevates a somewhat I want to say lackluster but a somewhat of a script that has some shortcomings so again 4.5 out of 5 I saw it on IMAX I recommend you all do the same because again it is a true immersive experience that I think you all will enjoy but hey that's my thoughts on the creators once you've seen it Let's have a discussion in the comments. Did it work? Did it not work? Let's talk in the comments below. Thank you all for watching today's review. Before we wrap this thing up, I want to thank you again. Hit the like button if you had a good time. Consider sharing the video. Leave your thoughts in the comments. And of course, subscribe to the channel. You all are awesome. Hope you're staying safe. And I'll catch you all on the next video.